Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how we can use Power Automate to monitor a shared mailbox. So if you're the owner of a shared mailbox, ever had that heart sinking moment where you suddenly thought, I haven't checked that mailbox for a number of weeks, what if we could use Power Automate to monitor that mailbox for you and send you a nice little convenient notification once a week say, with the number of emails that are sat there unread and a little table of information with subject, receive date, sender, etc. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how we can build step by step in today's video. So if that's something that interests you, please make sure you watch on. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the demonstration. So I'm going to start things off in my shared mailbox and I currently have seven emails. Now I'm going to mark a few of these so that they're currently recorded as read and you can see the count now has been dropped down to five. Now this is important during this demonstration because I'd like to provide a summary of unread emails in this inbox. Moving on to Power Automate, I'm going to use a recurrence trigger because I would like this flow to run every week. So I'm going to change the frequency onto week and then drop open the advanced options where I need to set the time zone in which case mine is the UTC plus zero. The start time is always important to make sure you set that to a date or time in the future. So because today is the Sunday, I would like this to run from Monday, which is tomorrow. I'm going to put in 2023-0605, a T for time, and then you can put in the exact time you'd like it to start, but if I have it triggering from midnight, it will start based on the time that I specify in the hours here. So we'll go with on the days and we'll choose Monday and for the hours, I'm going to set that to nine. And so because I've set that start time to midnight tonight or tomorrow, um, it will begin from the Monday, which is tomorrow, and it will start at nine o'clock. And so every Monday at nine, this flow will trigger. Moving on to our next action, we'd like to get our emails. And so with the get emails version three action, there are a couple of things we need to set. The first thing is the original mailbox address. Now this is based on our shared mailbox. And if I search for feedback, which is the name of my shared mailbox, you'll see it's popping up there. This will mean that I'm now gonna start getting all those emails from the inbox based on them being unread. So we have this parameter in the drop down, a yes or a no, fetch only unread messages. I'm gonna keep this to yes, because all I want is a summary of those unread messages. Another parameter which is of interest, we have a top count. Now that top count is currently set to 10. You can increase it to a maximum of 25. But whilst you may have a mailbox of hundreds and thousands of, of emails, it's worth recognizing that there is this fixed limitation. So upper maximum, 25. Ultimately what we want to do is we want to be able to notify ourselves that we have some new messages in this shared mailbox. Next, it'd be quite nice to provide a nice visual summary. So I'm going to use create HTML. And we'll go ahead and create the HTML table using the value from our action above. So you'll see a list of the response objects in the form of value. And whilst this would create an HTML table for us, we want to limit the columns that come back. So the columns are currently automatic. It's based on all the dynamic data. We're gonna set this to custom because there are only four columns that I'd like to return. And they are from, subject, importance, and the received date time. And then all we have to do is jump into the value here and pick the respective dynamic value from the right-hand side. So we'll go ahead and pick from, subject, the importance, and I'll have to search for date, there we go, received time, which is in fact the received date time. Now, because the received date time comes back as an ISO 8601 string, I think it'd be quite useful to turn this out into a more usable date time string. So I'm actually going to remove this and I'm going to go into the expression tab and I'm going to type in format date time. I can then put in the open and close brackets, choose the dynamic content, panic because I can't see the dynamic value, but earlier when I hovered my mouse over that dynamic action, I could see that it was based on the expression item open close brackets question mark and the value or the key received date time. Next up, what I need to do is put in a comma and this is where I can specify the new format of our date time string. 
So I think it'd be quite useful to first of all have the days at the beginning, so lowercase double d's. We have an uppercase m for the month, which will give us the numerical, but if I put in three uppercase m's, I'll get the shorthand version of the month. If I put in four, I'll get the long version of the month, and then I can put in the years in the form of lowercase y's. We'll go with the hours, a semicolon, lowercase m's and i think that will do it so i don't need to worry about including the seconds so we'll have a nicely formatted date time string which will give us the days as a number the month as a full string and the year as a number followed by the hours and the minutes so we'll go ahead and hit ok then all we need to do is to add an action to send the email so we can get that email back to ourselves to remind us that in fact there are group emails waiting for us to process so i search for my mailbox and we'll go with my demo bar 365. I'll choose the subject, so I'll say there weekly alert, but I think it'd be quite useful to have a count in the subject, and we can do that using the length expression. So length, open close brackets, into dynamic content, and choose value. And that will now give us the number of emails that have been retrieved from the get emails action. Go ahead and hit OK, and we can include also the word email. So we'll get a subject that will say weekly alert, three emails, for instance. In the body, all I really want to do at this point is to supply the HTML table, and then we can go ahead and save and test. We'll put the flow into test mode, we can set it to manual and hit the test button and run our flow. If I jump across onto my email, you can see now I've received this summary. It tells me that there are five emails, and we get this summary here. Doesn't look too good on the eye, so maybe we need to add a bit of formatting just so it's a bit easier for us to read the rows that are in this table. But we have that count right, and we've also changed the format of the date, which looks a lot nicer than it would have been had it been in the ISO 8601 format. So we'll jump back onto my feedback inbox. I'm going to mark a couple more of those emails as red, and we'll get that count down. We now have three. And if we go back into our flow, we can go and edit that flow and we can try and change the format of that table so it looks slightly more professional. So we'll go ahead and hit the plus. I'm going to add in another action just above that send email called a compose. And with that, I'm going to insert some HTML. And this HTML is called a CSS style sheet for tables. And it just so happens that if I jump across onto this W3 doc site, which I'll include in the description, it has some sample style sheets for us. So one of the examples is based on horizontal dividers. And if I go into the try it yourself, we can see here the table could have these lovely little lines between it. But we also have one further down here, which creates a hoverable table. And again, if we try that ourselves, we can see that as we hover up and down, those rows become highlighted. The other option we've got is a zebra striped table, which pretty awful colors. We could look to change that ourselves, but if that's something you're looking for, again, you have the sample code here that you can copy. I'm gonna go with the hoverable rows, and in order for me to implement this in my flow, I need to copy everything that's included in the style tags, both the opening style and the closing style tag here. I can control C to copy it, jump back onto my flow, into my compose and paste that in. And that will give me the code for a nicely styled HTML table. I need to get that into my email. So if I put my cursor in front of the HTML, it must be in front, not after the HTML table. I can then insert that compose, so I should end up with the first compose being the output of our compose containing the style sheet, and the second being the body of our HTML table. When I now go ahead and test this, we'll get a nicely formatted HTML table. We'll go ahead and run that, and if we jump back across onto my email, we'll see that we now have that neatly formatted email. The alert tells us we have three emails, because of course we read a couple of those emails, and we have a slightly more professional looking table with that hoverable row. Now what if you don't want your summary to come in via email? Maybe you'd like it to come in via Teams. So if we jump back to our flow, I'll keep the original actions in here to send us an email, but I'm also going to look up post message. And this will allow us to post a message into a chat or a channel. So maybe you might want the message to come to yourself 
in which case we could choose post in chat with the flow bot but equally you might want it to go into a channel so that people within your team can be made aware of the summary of emails that are currently sitting in your shared mailbox so i'm going to choose a team in this case it's going to be my demo bar 365 my channel i've created specifically a feedback group channel and like before provide a quick summary of how many emails are currently sitting there as unread so you have and then we'll go into the expression tab, type in length with the open and close brackets into dynamic content and choose value. Say okay to that. So you have however many emails on red. And if I return a couple of times, I can insert that HTML table. Now the unfortunate thing about posting a message in a chat or a channel using HTML is that we can't use style sheets or certainly I haven't been able to find out how we can use style sheets to make it look a bit prettier. You might want to consider using an adaptive card, which will give you a nice structured adaptive card, and I can do a video about that if that's something that you're interested in. But for the purpose of the demo, if I go ahead and save and test this, we can have a look at the output within our feedback channel on my Demo Bird 365 team. So we'll jump onto my team. You can see now I have a summary, I've got three unread, and there are three rows in my HTML table. If I was to jump back into my shared mailbox here and select all of these emails and mark them all as unread, back into my flow, and we'll go ahead and test that one more time. We've now got seven emails that are unread, and jumping onto my email again, we can have a look at that summary. We can see now we have seven emails that are unread and we have our HTML table with those seven emails. Equally, jump over onto Teams. Our latest post here shows that we have seven unread emails with the summary of those seven emails in our shared mailbox. So some other things you might want to consider, you might want to insert some conditional logic. So if there are no emails, you might want to send a different message or a different email. And the way that you do that is we go into add an action here, probably before we've sent that email out, we can search for condition. With that condition, we can specify that it checks the length. Because if we know that the length or the number of emails is zero, so based on length, dynamic content, we can choose value here, say okay. If the length is equal to zero, we know that we have no emails in which case we could add in an action here to send an email to ourselves to say no emails in your shared mailbox. And at least then you won't get an empty HTML table. Now, at the moment, this conditional check is it equal to zero. Send an email to say no emails in your shared mailbox. If it's not equal to zero, you want it to send your email with the HTML table and the Teams message. So we'll drag that up into the No branch. And if we go ahead and test this, I'll go and mark all those emails in this mailbox so we know that they are all now read. Put this into test mode, manually test it run that flow and if we jump back into my email again, we can see that I have the message to say that there are no emails in my shared mailbox. If I was to go and mark one of these messages as unread, put it back into test mode, run that flow, and if we jump back into my email, we can see we now have that one email with our HTML table because of course what will have happened is the condition will have resolved as false because the length was not equal to zero in this case. Branch right, send an email, and also post a message in our chatter channel here, which we can see you have one unread email. So as a final bonus to my videos, I'm gonna start showing you both the existing editor that you see on the screen here versus the new editor, which has just been announced as a preview feature. So there's no need to panic yet. Nothing has changed, but it's just to make you aware of what is coming, that is a new designer. The functionality is exactly the same. You're still gonna have triggers and actions and have to set various parameters. And these two flows, both this one here with our recurrence, our get emails, create HTML table, compose and condition that we just built is exactly the same as this one you see here. Again, with our recurrence, get emails, 
our create HTML table, compose, and our condition. Hopefully, by sharing this information with you now, you'll be ready to get going with this new designer when it eventually drops as general availability. If you've got this far, thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you again sometime soon. Cheers.